Hi, this is Helmi from Astronomical Solutions Company, and today I will be demonstrating to you the Ioptron Sky Hunter portable mount. Uh, this is an unscripted demonstration, so I'll be figuring this out as we go along together. And uh, I hope to demonstrate to you some of the capabilities of this mount. First thing we'll cover is what comes out of the box when you buy it from us. There are several configurations you can buy, but what we sell is the complete set. So you get the mount itself, which is this head unit, very conveniently sized, will uh, fit into a camera bag. You get the equatorial wedge, which you will be using when you're using it for equatorial mode, like when you're doing astrophotography. You'll get this spear extension, makes it much easier to use uh, the mount without the telescope colliding with the tripod, also gives you a more comfortable working height for the mount. You'll get the tripod, standard Ioptron inch and a quarter tripod, same as the one used in the Sky Guider Pro and uh, Sky Tracker Pro. You will get one counterweight and a counterweight bar. Optional extras that we recommend you would buy is a counterweight extension bar. This is made by William Optics. Allows you to put uh, slightly heavier instruments closer to the load capacity of the mount. And we have also extra counterweights. These are highly recommended accessories. I will start by demonstrating alt azimuth mode, which is uh, ideal for visual observing or when you're in a hurry and you don't have time to polar align or you just want to keep things simple. So the first thing you'd want to do is attach the pier extension to the tripod. Fits the same way you'd fit any camera onto a tripod with a threaded rod at the bottom and you'd tighten this. That's the pier extension installed. Let's extend the tripod legs to a more comfortable working height. So now we have the tripod at a very comfortable working height. I'd be very comfortable observing at this height. I am a short person at uh, 5 feet 4 inches. If you are above, uh, I guess, 6 feet, you will struggle with this height. You might want an observing chair to more comfortably use this for visual use. But uh, for a short person like me, this is a very convenient height. In order to operate the mount in alt azimuth mount mode, you don't need to use the wedge. You could mount it directly onto the pier extension. You would uh, hold this center button while switching on and it will switch to... You'll get blinking lights on the LEDs here and you are now in alt azimuth mount mode. Now that we have attached the Sky Hunter onto the tripod directly, there's a bubble level on top which you could use to level. Uh, surprisingly, I'm already level. You would keep it level with the horizon and this will uh, improve go-to accuracy in alt azimuth mode. You'd install the counterweight bar over here if you have a heavier instrument. I think with one or two kilos you might be able to get away without a counterweight bar. As I'm only demonstrating this product today, I'll not be attaching a telescope. I will be using a camera to demonstrate the functionality. You'd put the counterweight on the other side. What this does is it reduces the strain on the gears, so the weight is roughly balanced between the side of the telescope or camera and the side of the 
counterweight and makes the motors able to carry much more load than if you didn't have one of these uh, counterweights installed. For demonstration purposes, I've got an Ask Askar ACL 200 lens. This is an ideal partner for astrophotography using this mount. Normally, when you're using altazimuth mode, you'll not be using uh, an astrophotography setup. You would normally image in equatorial mode. There are circumstances when you would be imaging in uh, altazimuth mode. For example, if you're imaging the, the sun, polar alignment is very difficult in the daytime. In such circumstances, it is convenient to be able to image in altazimuth mode because then you don't have to polar align. But this mount is suitable for both visual use and astrophotography use. It's uh, important when you install your lens or camera or, or telescope to make sure the dovetail clamp is secure. You don't want things falling off. Now, the clutch for declination can be loosened with a red knob over here. Let me rotate this so you can see it. The declination uh, clutch is loosened over here. You see it's heavy in the back. Now ideally you'd want this balanced again so you don't create strain on the motor. You don't need to balance it perfectly but you need to get pretty close. That's balanced. So now you see with the clutch loose it's not falling over much. This is good enough to operate the setup. The right ascension clutch, which in altazimuth mode, this, this would not be declination, this would be altitude and this would be azimuth. If you were on a wedge for equatorial mode, we change the naming. This becomes declination and this becomes uh, right ascension. So this one is not a clutch knob. You actually release the clutch by rotating the entire device. If you wanted to tighten the clutch down, you'd partially tighten this and then you would push the counterweight shaft and that locks it in place. Now that we have the mount set up, to initialize the mount, the first uh, thing you need to do is uh, orient it so that the counterweight shaft, if you're facing north, let's assume me facing the camera is me facing north, the counterweight shaft would be on your right and the telescope needs to be pointing upwards and you're now ready to initialize the mount for operation. So we would tighten this clutch and we're now ready for operation in altazimuth mode. Telescope pointing up, counterweight on your right and you're facing north. This doesn't need to be 100% accurate. When you do your alignment in software, you would compensate for this. I will adjust this to be proper north so I can demonstrate how I'll slew to the sun. So if I remember correctly, in my current position, this is north. You would connect to the mount with the free application that iOptron provides, it goes into your mobile phone. It's called iOptron Commander Lite. It connects to the mount via Wi-Fi. I will now proceed uh, with the connection so I can demonstrate this. Okay, so we've got a device that's uh, SH Sky Hunter and then a few numbers. The numbers are unique to every unit. So now I'm connected via Wi-Fi to the Sky Hunter. When you open the Wi-Fi connection to the mount, some mobile phones need to be told that you are aware that this connection has no internet connectivity and to proceed with the connection anyway. This is specific to your phone and is outside the scope of this video. Next step would be to launch iOptron uh, Sky Commander, or oh, hold on, that's not what it's called. It's iOptron Commander Mobile. And there's a big red button that says tap to connect to iOptron mounts. So now I'm connected 
and I need to click on mount settings and uh, check everything is okay over there and it's automatically detected that I turned on the mount in altazimuth mode and you can set the time and date there's a button that says sync uh, current uh, device time to mount so it's taking the time from the phone to the mount and another one for the location so I've synced my GPS location and my GPS time onto the mount let's do a slew to the sun so I'm not correctly aligned right now the sun is roughly over there I'll select uh, the slew button solar system and let's find the sun confirm slew now it gives you a big warning that's pointing at the sun is dangerous and it is very dangerous we need special solar filters to point any optical instrument to the sun it uh, is dangerous for you and for your instrument so take precautions when observing the sun right now one of the precautions I'm taking is I'm making sure that this ASCAR telescope is covered there is no light entering the telescope so now I acknowledge that I have taken all safety precautions and it should roughly point at the sun remember this will not be accurate initially because we did not do a proper alignment there is a tick box that says enable tracking I tick that and it should track the sun I actually did a good job it's pretty much spot on on the sun but if it wasn't you would uh, move the mount and synchronize the position and that's it you're pointed at the sun now there is a way to drastically improve the capabilities of this device and that is by buying an application called uh, sky safari it's made by a third party sky safari on your mobile phone will connect to the iopton sky hunter and give you much more powerful capabilities so i launched sky safari Instructions for connecting Sky Safari to your Sky Hunter are available uh, in the manual and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's very easy to do, it's not complicated and it recognizes the mount and in Sky Safari I can I can control this fully let me just switch off night mode okay so now I can fully control this in sky safari uh, I'll get the camera closer to the screen so we have here different objects in the sky so right now it is pointed at the Sun let's say I wanted to point it Venus. I would select Venus and push go to. And the mount is slowing to Venus. Let's say my alignment was a bit off and the target is not in center. You have arrows here for controlling the mount. You can adjust the slow rate to a lower rate, let's say two. Fine tune it. It's a bit slow, so you can't really see it moving, but it is moving. I'll make it full rate. So, let's say now I'm confident I am pointed at Venus. I'll click align. It will ask me to confirm, and now I am aligned to Venus. And it's that easy to operate this it's mount. A very straightforward mount to operate, very lightweight, very portable. I'll now proceed to demonstrate the equatorial mode, which is mostly used for astrophotography. I shall now proceed to demonstrate how you would mount the Sky Hunter as an equatorial device rather than an uh, altazimuth device. So, and for safety reasons, it is advisable to remove any telescope you have mounted before you try and do this to avoid accidents. I have. Uh, dropped telescopes before and you should take precautions 
not to do the same same thing goes for the counterweight shaft you should never mount uh, a, an equatorial mount in the wrong order you could seriously injure yourself and damage your equipment so normally the order in which you would mount uh, an equatorial setup would be the mount itself then the counterweight shaft which will give you balance then the counterweight and the telescope lasts so in order to operate the Ioptron Sky Hunter in equatorial mode, you would need to mount this wedge. The wedge screws in to the top of the device like this. By the way, you can operate the AZ mode with the wedge as well. You don't need to mount it directly onto the tripod the way I did. Uh, in fact, it might be easier to use the wedge because then if you wanted to change to equatorial mode, you just loosen this knob and you're ready to go equatorial. So I'm putting this roughly at my latitude, which is around 23 degrees. There, lock it in place. It's easier to mount this if I loosen the clutch so that the dovetail is vertical. Hold it with your hand, you'll feel its seat on the screw at the bottom of the wedge. Tighten it in and uh, the first step of mounting it in equatorial mode is done. Next would be to put the counterweight shaft. Careful, drop this on your toes and you'd be sorry. Now, I'm mounting quite a heavy instrument, and in order to balance more easily, I use this optional William Optics extension bar. You remove the toe saver. They call it the toe saver because it prevents the counterweight from sliding down and slamming into your toes. And you mount this instead. And this allows you to balance with a heavier telescope. Okay. So we have this in place instead of the toe saver and now we can move the counterweight further out and reach balance for a heavier telescope without uh, the need of a second counterweight. Otherwise you could always use two counterweights. Now to operate this in EQ mode, the first thing you need to do is roughly polar align. There is a through hole through the mount so you can uh, look at Polaris and you'd look through the back and roughly point this at Pol Pol Polaris, uh, Polaris the North Star. This is not proper polar alignment. Ioptron has taken the assumption that if you're using this in equatorial mode, most probably you're doing photography, which means you probably are going to be using software polar alignment. They also offer an optional iPolar version. The iPolar needs a laptop and it would connect over here. With the iPolar device, you can uh, polar align very precisely using iPolar. You can also use uh, applications like uh, SharpCap has a polar alignment module. You have uh, ASI Air Plus, which works very well with this device, has built-in polar alignment functionality. So for fine polar alignment you need to use software if you have the optional hand controller which we don't have for demonstration purposes i believe there's a three there's a iterative polar alignment procedure built into the hand controller which works quite well it's a bit confusing the first time you use it but once you've learned how to use it it works very well and it's particularly useful if you don't have a computer and even if you had a polar scope but uh, you don't have a clear view of Polaris. You can use the iterative polar align process to improve your polar alignment. Uh, for demonstration purposes, we can assume that uh, we are polar aligned now. This is just uh, for demonstrative purposes. Let's say we're polar aligned, but 
to actually pull a line you have uh, push pull screws for the azimuth over here so one screw on the right one screw on the left you'd loosen one tight and the other one it will turn left and right and you have uh, a, a warm gear driven altitude and you turn this to get the correct uh, altitude for the pole star then you lock it all in place and you are ready to operate in equatorial mode Okay, I'd like to make a minor correction. When I set this up, I said you do not need to do anything to get it back into EQ mode. You have to repeat the same series of button presses. So you press the button with a circle in the back and switch on the mount, and that will revert it back into equatorial mode. Now the zero position, you'd use the move buttons on your screen, and you'll move it so that the counterweight is facing directly down. and the telescope is facing straight ahead and that would be your zero position okay so now I am I believe that's pretty good okay this is the zero position and we'll go back to the previous screen and click zero position on the screen set position as zero position and now we are in equatorial mode and we can perform the same functions as before so I'll do a slew to the Sun find the Sun in the controller and confirm slew I acknowledge that I've checked that it's covered and or if I'm using a solar filter all the safety precautions are taken and it's now slewing towards the sun. The accuracy of this slew depends on the accuracy of your polar alignment. Since I cannot see Polaris, I'm way off. I suspect that, uh, yes, as I expected, I'm uh, very far off from proper alignment. Now, there is a trick you can do if you're observing the sun in equatorial mode, and you do a go-to to the sun, this is not very accurate, but it at least gives you roughly in the ballpark area. You look at the shadow of the telescope, and when the shadow is the smallest, you are pointed at the sun. So you can see why alt azimuth mode is very useful for visual observing when you can't be bothered with polar alignment, for when you're observing the sun, when polar alignment is very difficult. It makes a lot of sense having access to AZ mode. And uh, the Wi-Fi connectivity is amazing, makes it very easy. You don't have to carry wires and hand controllers. And Sky Safari can do a lot, which uh, normally you would need to do, connect to a PC to do. So Sky Safari is not a very expensive application. It's worth the purchase price. Really unlocks the full potential of this mount. I hope this quick uh, introduction to the Sky Hunter is useful to you. I hope it gives you enough information. It seems that there's not much information from users out there. If you have any further questions, uh, please feel free to put them in the comments area below. I read every single comment. I'll respond uh, to your question and uh, hopefully I'll be able to help you out. Uh, if you like this video, found it useful, please like and subscribe and we'll work on bringing you more useful videos in the future. Thank you very much for watching.